All right, so what you're looking at here is a waveform of the chorus from the song The Luckiest by Ben Folds. And uh, this was a gift from my wife a year ago. And I really wanted to hang it up on the wall, but I didn't want to hang it up just by using a little metal French cleat that it came with. I wanted to build a shadow box around it. So The Luckiest is the song we danced to at our wedding. And so it's pretty near and dear to my heart. And I really wanted to treat this really thoughtful gift with a little bit more attention. So here I'm just kind of mocking up where I think the waveform is going to be mounted. So I took a piece of half inch plywood and I laid it on top of some uh, mat board that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I just wanted to kind of mark around the piece of wood because I'm going to ultimately cut this mat board out and mount it to this piece of plywood as the back of what will be the shadow box. Also from Hobby Lobby, I bought this mat cutter, which actually comes in handy. It's got this nice rule to it and comes with this box blade and you're able to cut straight lines. And then of course you can put an angled cutter on there to cut mat board at an angle. If you're doing some professional frames, which I've done in some of my other videos, you can check out on my channel. But here I am just cutting down the mat board to size to match the piece of plywood that, um, you saw earlier and all I did once I cut it out was I sprayed both the plywood and the mat board down with some 3m adhesive and then I waited for both of them to get just tacky and then once you touch these two together after they're tacky that's it you're not pulling it back up so I went ahead and just laid the mat board on there. It was slightly crooked at first, but I was able to make it work. And then of course I used some gloves so I wouldn't get any fingerprints or dirt on the mat board. And I spread it around and made sure that it was nice and smooth. Then I laid the sound wave on top of the board and I wanted to kind of understand, okay, how tall is this gonna set up off the board? And it came out to about two and an eighth inch. Since it's a shadow box, I wanted it the frame to be a little bit deeper so there was a space there so then I took this piece of a five quarter walnut that I got from West Vice Hardwood again not a sponsor but a great hardwood supplier here in the Southeast Texas area I took this and I was able to mark it where I thought I'd be able to get two pieces because I was gonna basically rip this down the middle so then I took it over to the miter saw went ahead and cut it down to size rough length And then from there, I was able to hop over to the jointer. And since this was S2F, our surfaced two sides, I was able to run that flat side up against the fence of the jointer and joint this one edge flat. And of course I checked that face on my table saw before I ran it through the jointer, so I knew it was flat. And then once I got a nice flat surface, I'd be able to take it back over to the table saw and rip it down the middle. And like I said, ripping it down the middle would allow me to get two long pieces and essentially all four sides of the shadow box out of that one piece of walnut. So save a little bit of money on material. As you can see here, this piece is a little over seven inches, about seven and a half inches. And because of the depth of the waveform on top of the plywood, I figured about three and a half inches was going to be perfect. And that would give me plenty of space for a gap between the front of the waveform as well as give me this half inch lip for the front of the, the frame which is what you see me ripping here and because i don't have or i didn't have a dado blade at the time i basically ripped this dado on these pieces one pass at a time it took forever and that's what you're seeing me do here is I basically would move the fence over slightly each time. I thought it was a little too sketchy for me to stand it up and raise the blade all the way up to cut that. So I just took my time and repeated this cut over and over and over. And this is what I was left with. You see the little half inch lip, which is going to be the front of the face. And ultimately off camera, I was able to clean up this mess with a chisel and sandpaper. Then from there I hopped over to the table saw again and put my blade at a 45 and got my crosscut sled out, which you can see my little cat's Moses stop there. And I didn't make a video for this, but 
pretty cool crosscut sled and started to cut the miters for the frame. Of course, in that clip, I hit the tripod with the sled, but ultimately all I did was take each piece after I had the rough measurements of my plywood piece and I was able to cut them all to correct length, final length, with this crosscut sled. And once I was done cutting all four pieces out, I was able to kind of just do a dry assembly on the table saw itself to just to see how everything looked. And uh, once I was happy with it, uh, proceeded to the next step. And look at those joints, perfect mitered joints. And of course there's a little bit of tear out on a couple of these pieces, but I was okay with it because ultimately I was able to fix that when I went to the sanding phase of the build, which you'll see here in just a little while. But once I was happy with all of those corners, I proceeded to uh, just use the blue tape method to tape everything up and glue all the joints together. So again, all I did was flip everything over, put some blue tape on each seam, and then you'll see me here in a second flip it over once again and I'm going to put blue tape on the inside seam so that it'll be a little bit easier clean up once I glue everything up which is what I'm doing here putting glue in each joint spread that out by hand and then I'll close it up clamp it together and wait for it to dry and once I got it closed up, I put a couple of these 90 degree clamps on it and then I clamped a engineer square in one corner and made sure everything was square. And then um, after leaving it overnight, I came back to it the next day and wanted to start putting the inside of the shadow box. So all I did was take a piece of quarter inch plywood here and I went ahead and measured that first piece, which is what you see in my left hand there. And I cut it to length, put it in and I took a measurement for the second piece. I'm going to put these in one by one um, all the way around and then the fourth and final piece will be a snug friction fit. So then once I got the measurement I took it over to the crosscut sled now in the 90 degree position and uh, cut it to the line where I measured to. Then I brought it back over to the frame and I held up a piece of mat board to it because again that piece of plywood will be veneered with a piece of mat board measured to that and then made sure that I had a good accurate number and I went back to the table saw and cut it down once again and all I did was do all three pieces like I said and I want to go ahead and mount these and veneer them with the mat board put them into the frame and then get the measurement for my fourth and final piece so again sprayed them both with the 3M spray adhesive and then I went ahead and attached the mat board to each one of those pieces of quarter inch plywood and that's what you're seeing me do here and I left the mat board long because I'll go back and trim that up here in just a second and like I said this stuff gets pretty sticky so once you put it down that's about it you can't really move it so once again, I went back, I trimmed up the mat board, got it to length, and then I was able to install all three pieces that I cut and I labeled, as you can see there, that's number two, this is number one. So put number one in first, put number two in, because I'm looking for a tight friction fit so those corners don't have any gaps when you have final assembly. Took the third piece, put it in, and now I can measure my fourth and final piece, which is gonna be in between each mat board. And I just felt like that was a more accurate way to do it. And off camera, I cut that and mounted the mat board on that plywood, just like I did the other three pieces. And then I hopped over here to the table saw and cut down the plexiglass for the shadow box. And of course you could use glass here, but this stuff is pretty durable, easy enough to cut on the table saw, and I like it. So after I cut it down to size, just check to make sure it fits perfectly in my frame, and it does. So then I went back to the plywood backer and measured and marked where I wanted the waveform to sit in order to hold that in so I could permanently mount it. I went ahead and stuck down this piece of double-sided tape. Meticulously pulled that off and then 
mounted the waveform to the backer. And then after I mounted it, I took my, my ruler and I made sure that everything is nice and square, measured down from the top to the little strip on the back, measured in from on each side, and then of course you can see the gap at the bottom was a little bit bigger because again, I'm gonna have that brass plate down there. So then I flipped it over and I wanted to permanently attach it. And all I did was pre-drill a couple of holes here that I'll send some screws through. And that piece ain't going anywhere. Made sure to put that tape on there so I didn't go all the way through the front. And then I countersunk these holes so that the screws will sit flush in the back of that frame. And then once those were done, I sent a few screws through the back. And like I said, the double-sided tape with those screws together, that thing's not going anywhere. It's firmly secured. We got it. All right, so once I was good with that, I hopped over to everybody's favorite part of any build, the sanding phase. And all I did was take a random orbital sander with some Cubitron sandpaper that I got from JCAT's Moses' online store, and I sanded up to 220. So much fun. But once I was happy with everything, sanded it all down, got it nice and smooth, I was ready to finish. Now, you're gonna see Odie's oil here, and I know there's lots of controversy surrounding Odie's oil. But look, I spent 45 bucks on this jar like over a year ago. I'm going to be using this stuff. Plus, it's pretty easy to go on. It's a picture frame. It should just be fine. So all I did was take a gray scotch Bright pad and I worked the oil into the frame all the way around. Each side, the front, the back, and uh, until it was good to go. And then once that dried for a little while, I was able to come back and buff it out with a microfiber cloth. And quite honestly, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with this, the way it turned out. And you'll notice that the inside of the frame isn't finished, which typically you would want to finish all sides of the wood so that moisture doesn't dry uh, unevenly and cup the wood. But I also want to mount those strips of plywood veneered with the mat board on the inside of the frame and I knew it wouldn't stick very well to the Odie's oil so I left it unfinished. We'll see what happens. But I went ahead and cleaned the glass, got it ready and as you can see it's got a nice little friction fit, floats right in. And then once that was in there I could go ahead and start mounting the plywood backed with mat board into the frame. And I did that with double sided tape. Took a piece of double sided tape on each piece, cut it to length, and then put it inside the frame. And of course, it's pressure sensitive or it's activated once it's, once you put pressure on it. So I went ahead and made sure it was pressed in on each side. And I completed that on all four sides with all of the pieces that I had cut. And then I was able to put the back in. And as you can see, the plywood veneer with the mat board is what holds the back up and pretty much that's it next thing to do is check it out make sure it looks good there's no gaps and then uh, mount the back permanently to the frame and get it ready to be hung and here's a quick view of the finish and all of those miter joints look perfect any of the tear out was sanded down turned out beautiful in my opinion now you'll also notice I don't have any splines here. I figured that joint is big enough that I'm gonna go ahead and take the risk of not putting splines. But for some reason, something happens, I can always go back and add a spline later. So off camera, you can see I mounted the board to the frame with, some, with a brad point gun. And then I flipped it over, measured down and in each side, pre-drilled a couple of holes, and then I mounted these little D-ring flaps that I can tie the picture frame wire to, which is what I'm installing here. And 
and pretty much the build portion is done. So the next step is to take that little brass plaque over to my friend Dana Hanning's house. He's got his own Etsy store, Hanning Productions. You can check him out. He turned some really beautiful pins and some other stuff. But he has an X-Carve machine, and I wanted him to carve basically the description and the message of what this was onto that little brass plaque. So obviously I sped this video up, but that entire process took about 35 minutes. But I think it turned out great. Now, now in hindsight, if I had to do it over again, I would probably rather have used a laser engraver, but hey, maybe on the next one. So here you can see, this is a waveform of the course from the Luckiest But Ben Folds. It was a gift from Lana, my wife, on Christmas in 2021. And we danced to this song at our wedding. And this is the final product. And here it is hanging up front and center on the wall in my record room. This is where I have my record player and all of my memorabilia. And uh, I think it turned out awesome. So happy to have this one in the bag and uh, stay tuned and subscribe, like the video and uh, come back for the next video. I'll see you soon. Thanks.